Hey guys, it's Mike here from Master Mix, and in this video, I want to go on a little bit of a rant here. Look, if you're a musician who refuses to play to a click track when you're recording, you shouldn't be making recordings. That's my stance. And I know that now that I've said that, there's going to be a bunch of you guys that are going to leave comments below saying, well, such and such record was made without a click, so and so did this without a click, and these are massive records. Look, I get that. There have been records that have been made without a click track, but those are the exception to the rule these days, okay? And a lot of those records were like historical records. Like they're records that were made in like the 60s and 70s and stuff like that. And te technology has changed these days. And people's listening habits have changed. And what they expect to hear has changed. So this, there are multiple reasons why you need to play to a click track when you're recording these days. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So the first point that I want to bring up is simply musicianship. Look, if you're a musician who refuses to play to a click track, chances are it's probably because you're not good enough to play to a click track yet and you need to practice. And this is something that I find happens a lot in the studio. Musicians are afraid to play to a click because they know that they can't and they haven't practiced to it and they're afraid that it's going to show off how poor of a musician they are. You know, when it comes to being a musician, there's two parts of being a musician. There's the part of being able to play the right notes, which most people can get, but then there's the other element of playing in time. And when you read sheet music, there's a reason why there's a time signature and there's a tempo, and that is so that everybody can play at the exact same time, and as a band, as a group, as an orchestra, or whatever, everybody can play tightly to each other. And if you have this abstract time signature or tempo where everything pushes and pulls and, you know, there's no real leader in here, well, you're going to get sloppy sounding mixes. You're going to get sloppy recordings because the band is not going to sound tight. You're going to hear drum hits that are then flammed with a guitar a guitar strum or a bass hit or, or vocals will be late. Like, if you start to have this push and pull going on in your music, it becomes very distracting. And as listeners, we are so used to hearing records that are tight sounding. And for good reason. We As listeners, now we expect it to be. And so if you're a musician who refuses to play to a click track, it's mainly, it's mainly because you don't know how to play to a click. So you need to practice. And so you need to spend that time. If you don't, if you're not ready to play to a click track in recording, you need to spend time in pre-production practicing. And trust me, I guarantee you that if you start practicing to a click track before you go into a studio, if you spend like months working, rehearsing with a click track, you will just naturally become a tighter musician. And nobody's saying that you have to play to a click track all the time and that live you need to play to a click track. Look, you can play off click live if you want, whatever you want. But in the studio, you should always be playing to a click. Now, the second point when it comes to musicianship is this idea of feel. One of the most common excuses that I hear is that if you play to a click track, you're going to lose the feel of the song. And that is complete bullshit, okay? You listen to any of the top songs that are on the radio right now, they have all been played to a click. And you can't tell me that they have no feel. Feel comes from things like dynamics. They come from things like emotions. And if you capture those things in your songs and in your recordings, you will be able to feel the song. You're going to be able to feel the emotion. You know, there's a difference between something like a snare roll that goes da 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 versus da 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 Right? Like, dynamics make a really big difference. And so that's also another reason why, like when you're adding things like drum samples in, you want it to sound natural. You need to have some sort of dynamic range in there so that things don't just sound robotic. And every mix out there these days has drum samples as well. So, you know, again, it comes back down to dynamics and emotion. And if you can capture those in recording, you will have feel. The second thing I want to talk about is editing. Now, when you record to a click track, editing becomes so much easier because you have a grid to work to. So let's say you have a pretty perfect take, but you mess up one line vocally. Maybe you your voice cracks a little bit or something like that. Well, if you play to a click track, then it's easy to re-record the same part and easily slide it into its slot because your tempo is going to be exactly what you need it to be in order for it to match. But if you don't have a click track, you don't have a solid tempo, you're not going to be able to comp things together and make it work naturally. So that is another huge reason in itself to record to a click track. As an engineer, 
click tracks are going to save you so much time and so much energy on editing. So you want to always be playing to a click. The other thing too is that like, you could simply record the drummer to the click. And then once they've played to that time and they've locked in time, you can now get rid of the metronome and you can then have all the other guitar players and singers and bass players and everyone else play on top of the drums. At least now everything, like the drums become the click track at this point. And at least now the drums provide that steady rhythm for everything to line up to. So playing to a click track is essential for locking things up and making things easy to edit and easy to align and make everything sound tight. If you aren't playing tight, things will sound sloppy. And that brings me to my third point, which is the opportunity cost of not playing to a click track. Now you might be saying, well, what does this have to do with opportunity costs? First impressions mean everything. So think about it. When you listen to a band, how long do you listen to that band for, or listen to that song for before you make a judgment call? of whether you like that music or whether you're going to keep listening to that music. Chances are it's pretty quick. So I can tell you that most people are going to listen to a song and if they start to feel like it's fluctuating in time and like things sound sloppy right away and not, not everybody's playing right on top of each other. It's not, it's not locked in. It's, it's sloppy. It's loose. People aren't going to enjoy it and they're going to turn it off. And if you're writing songs for people to dance to, if people don't have that steady pace to dance to, that steady rhythm, and things all of a sudden push and pull and feel really slow at some times and really fast at others, people won't be able to dance to it. So it's going to be jarring and it's going to become distracting and people aren't going to like it. So you have to consider these facts. And there, there is a big opportunity cost here, which is that your first impressions mean everything. And think about the opportunities that you could lose out on because you haven't presented your song in the best light. You haven't presented your band as the tightest version it can be. You know, things like getting gigs, getting on tours, uh, getting on radio, licensing deals, record deals, finding management, all of these things that so many bands want, they're missing out on these opportunities because they're not presenting their music in the best way. They're not presenting it as the tightest, most professional sounding band. Instead, they're feeling a little sloppy. And look, none of these people who are in these positions of getting you these gigs or becoming your manager or your record label or any of that, they aren't going to say to you, look, your band's sloppy. No. Instead, they're going to just say, sorry, we don't have a need for you right now. Or, or, or the show's booked up. Sorry. Or, you know, we don't need another band on this tour. Or we've got, we've got other songs on our playlist that we need to play on the radio. That kind of thing. They're going to be nice because that's human nature to be nice. Okay. But there is an opportunity cost there. Because their first impression of your band being sloppy ruined their impression of your band. So they're not going to hire you to do, to do these things and to help out your band. So why wouldn't you want to present yourself in the best light possible? Why wouldn't you want to be seen as the tightest musician, the best musician you can be, the best band you can be? So you need to really consider this before you say that recording to a click track is just pure nonsense because it's not. There is a lot of stuff that goes into this that makes your band presented in the best light, that makes your songs presented in the best light, and that gets you energy and emotion and feel, but in a way that people expect it to sound. And if you're not going to do that, well, then you're going to lose out. So that's my rant for today. Look, if you want to be seen as a professional band, you need to play to a click track. And you don't want to lose out on opportunities because you're not that good enough to play to a click track yet. Practice. Work hard at it. Improve your musicianship. And I guarantee you that the end result will be a much stronger, better sounding recording. So there you have my feelings on this topic. Now I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment below and let me know. Do you agree with everything I'm saying here or do you disagree? Because either way, this is a good debate to have. And I think it's good to hear from both sides. But... Make sure to leave a comment below and let me know your feelings on this. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also check out MasterYourMix.com if you want more tutorials and more helpful tips about mixing and recording and all sorts of stuff. On that website, I'm get currently giving away a free download. It's called The Ultimate Mixing Blueprint. It is a guide to using EQ and compression in your mixes. And 
It's all about helping you get up and running as fast as possible so that you can dial in settings and know exactly what to boost and cut with EQ, as well as how to add compression and all sorts of stuff to make your mix sound really good, really fast. So once again, check out MasterYourMix.com. And that's it for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care, guys.